But I'm curious, you mentioned something in the 1950s, up into the 1950s, this was used as antifungal. I'm always curious, like, okay, so why do we stop? Why, what, what happened along the way that now all of a mm -hmm. sudden we only have some small players like you saying, hey, I think this is a really good thing. It's a great question. And it comes down to the side effects of taking methylene blue. So methylene blue concentrates in urine. So it gets processed by the liver. It stays, actually, the interesting thing about methylene blue is that whether you get it IV, you do it in a buccal trochee, which is our dissolvable lozenges that we have for your mouth, or if you swallow it, methylene blue is about 100% bioavailable, which means that almost all of it that you take is gonna get into your body, which is pretty cool. There's very few drugs or supplements that you actually can make that claim. For example, I always give the, the alternative example of something like N-acetylcysteine or NAC for short, NAC, that's about 10% bioavailable. Most supplements, wow. when you take them orally, about between five and 20% bioavailable. Now you have like liposomals and things like that, that might be a little bit higher on the bioavailability side, but in general, they're pretty low. But methylene and blue- that, Is that just in general because of our stomach yes. acid breaking it down? Okay. So stomach acid and also liver digestion. And so the, mm. the liver itself is made to basically help process the things that we eat and drink or whatever. And for the most part, what the liver does is deactivate or make them less bioavailable. So it decreases the activation of supplements. And so this is one of the reasons why at our company we make something called buccal trochies, these dissolvable lozenges, these squares that, that go between your upper cheek and your gums and dissolve there over about 15 to 30 minutes. Because that bypasses your first pass metabolism is what it's called when the liver starts digesting things. And bypassing that helps you get more of that ingredient into your bloodstream faster. And also being in the cheek here, there's eight layers of mucosa up here. And that means it dissolves slowly enough that those ingredients get dissolved into that circulation in your brain as opposed to being swallowed as if you just did like a sublingual uh, drop or something like that. Those drops, there's only one layer of mucosa there and it gets mostly just digested, to be honest. And so yeah. we used the methylene blue in the buccal trochee form because we knew that we'd get to the brain faster. And so we decided on that route. But to back to your original question is, why did it get out of favor is because it concentrates in your urine and it makes your urine blue. And people didn't want their urine to be blue, I guess. And at very, very high doses, which we don't use at our company and are only really used in hospital settings, it also makes the additional beneficial side effect, if you want to call it, not really for people, is that your secretions will also turn slightly blue. So this is your tears as well. Your poop will also turn blue at very high, very high doses. So we By use the way, what's considered a high dose? Because I know <clears throat> your buccal trochee, if you have, it's a square shape for yes. everybody to see. And that, that's a total of 16 milligrams yes. in that square shape. So exactly, if yeah. I were to pop one, that's 16 milligrams. What is, what's considered high dose? That's a really good question. And this is the nuances of the world of methylene blue are really important now because you're getting a lot more information out there. And so classically, greater than three milligrams per kilogram is thought to be a high dose. And that's, so if you're a 60 kilogram male or female, you're multiplying that by three milligrams, right? So three, it's 180 milligrams a day. So that's that's what's considered a high dose, okay? But really that's what it comes- to a lot of trochees I've got to have, that's, so yeah. That, that, yes, exactly. So we didn't formulate our product to be either on the, even on the higher end of the lower dose of the scale. And that would be between one and three milligrams typically. So one milligram per kilogram to three milligrams per kilogram is sort of the high end of the low dosed methylene blue scale. So what we do at transcriptions is we use less than one milligram per kilogram because a lot of the data that's come out is that's that's really where the sweet spot is for mitochondrial optimization the mm -hmm. cool thing about methylene blue is it's, it's called an electron cycler so it helps donate electrons so what, what, what that means it helps you make energy and at the same time it supports your antioxidant system by helping to pick up free electrons like reactive oxygen species and things like that. So as a result, it's giving you energy and resilience at the same time. But yeah. as, as you start getting it on the higher dose of the lower end of the scale, so one milligram per kilogram to three, at that level, you still start getting potential complications to several aspects. One of them could be your biofilms. So we have these gastric biofilms that protect us, that, that we have these ecosystems in our intestines that keep our gut healthy, those can be disrupted at that level. And also the half-life of methylene blue makes it a little like one of those things that you don't want to be taking every day if you're taking more than one milligram per kilogram per day. So in general, what we say is low dose is what we've described in our dosing, which is the cognitive 
optimization, the neurologic pathophysiology, like the, the people that are looking at the, in the neurologic world for, for methylene blue are using the dosing that we're using, somewhere between eight milligrams to about 32 milligrams per day-ish. So for us, 16 milligrams was the sweet spot. And what we found is that really tends to be the sweet spot for most people, or even half that dose tends to be the sweet spot for, for a decent amount of people as well. So, so for, for like long story short, low dose methylene blue classically is less than three milligrams per kilogram but the safest regular dosing of methylene blue is less than one milligram per kilogram because of the reasons i mentioned mm -hmm. the higher dosing also that you can take if you do take higher dosing regularly it also gives you a higher risk for having gastric ulceration and things like that so we don't want to do that so in in my clinical practice what i will do is i'll use intermittently higher dosed methylene blue somewhere between the one and three milligram dosing depending if there's an acute infection if there's acute uh, there's acute trauma, there's acute low oxygen states, because we know that methylene blue is very good cycling electrons, getting you more energy, helping you with antioxidant reserve. But if you're taking it more regularly for mitochondrial support and for mitochondrial dysfunction, it's really important to keep it at the lower dose of that scale. So that's why we have 16 milligram turkeys.